we get started with this tutorial, I will first demonstrate how to set up a personal account, for example, a Gmail account with Outlook. Then I'll demonstrate how to set up a business account with Outlook. So let's get started with a personal account. So I have a Gmail account. I have not set up any profiles on it yet. So we'll just open Outlook. You can find it from the start menu or you can simply type here under the search bar Outlook 2016. So typically you'll get this. And um, in this case, I'll just add my personal email. In this case, it's my Gmail account. And then I'll click on connect. Then of course, you'll need to add your password and click OK. Now in some cases, it may happen like it does not allow you to use the password or to sign in like it's doing in my case here. In this case, go here to your Gmail account, go under the configuration for your Gmail account, and then go under settings. And this might be the case with your Outlook.com account or Yahoo account and such. You'll try it first to set up your account through Microsoft Outlook. And if it doesn't work, then you'll have to go and sort out as to what else you have to enable. In this case, I need to go under forwarding, pop and IMAP. And then I need to enable here my IMAP. So notice IMAP is enabled. And we also might need here the configuration settings or the instructions for how to set it up in Outlook. So if we go here under configuration instructions, notice it wants all of these different settings for the outgoing server. So you'll basically need to set those in your Outlook. And it doesn't allow us to proceed any further. Now, in some cases, particularly with Gmail, your account might be blocked for logging in through Microsoft Outlook and such. And the reason for that is because Google considers Outlook as a less secure app to access your email. So in this case, since I could not log in earlier, what I need to do is go here to my inbox and notice it says review your sign in attempt. It says you can continue to use this app by allowing access to less secure apps. So we need to go into our account settings and allow Microsoft Outlook to access our Gmail account. So there are two steps to enable a personal account. We first need to go into the account settings and enable IMAP and POP3 if we needed to. But also we need to go into the account settings and allow less secure apps. And this is under the myaccount.google.com forward slash security. So now let's go ahead and try it again here. We'll change the account and go to Google and then IMAP and all these different settings. So now this needs to be port 993 and then SSL and then also for the outgoing server smtp.gmail.com and then port 465 and then SSL as well. Then click on next and then put your password again. And now our account has been set up and it's complete. We go here under set up Outlook and click on OK. And it's pretty much the same way that you'll set up any other personal accounts as well. And in this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up your business account or an exchange account with Microsoft Outlook with your business email account. Here, in order to make sure that we are going to pick a proper account for Microsoft Exchange, I suggest that you click on Advanced Options and choose Let me set up my account manually. If you're already connected to the business network, you can simply press Connect and it's going to use Active Directory and the sign in from there as well. All you'd have to put in is the email address from your company. Next, we click here on Connect and then make sure that you choose Microsoft Exchange. Then put the password in there from your email account from your business. And the account is complete and you can click OK. And also I'd suggest unless you're setting up your mobile phone, I'd suggest you uncheck the set up mobile phone option here. Then click OK and you'll be able to access your business email. Now, one of the advantages if you're using Microsoft Exchange from a business environment is that um, the email and the calendar and the contacts, it's all transparent. It's connecting directly to the server. And if you delete a message from Outlook, it deletes it from the server as well. 
so it keeps all your messages intact. The older technology out there was to use what's called POP3 type of connectivity where the messages were downloaded to your local computer. It's basically the messages were downloaded to your computer, then you delete them and the copy would remain on the server. With Exchange, all of that is uh, linked in real time. You delete the message from Outlook, it deletes it from the server, you receive a new message, it shows up in your computer and also you can have it on your mobile phone and gadgets as well. The same thing with is also the tight integration of the calendaring feature and the contacts feature and such that we'll cover shortly. Now that we are in Outlook, this is the business account and let's assume that you wanted to add a personal account. You can also do that by going under file here and then choose add an account follow the same process that we did follow earlier for adding a personal account and check rewind the video for that in Microsoft Outlook you can have more than one account your business account and any personal accounts that you want and they will show up here on the left hand side so just for the sake of demonstration here I'm going to do it very quickly by using my personal account And of course, make sure that your personal accounts have two-factor authentication and all that type of stuff. In this case, I have disabled it temporarily just so that I can set this up. And notice now I have my two accounts here. This is my business account, and then this is my personal account as well. So that's how you get started with Microsoft Outlook to set up your accounts, whether it's a business account or whether it's a personal account. Next, we are going to go into some of the components of the user interface in Microsoft Outlook so that you can be familiar with it and effectively use it for personal use or in the workplace to enhance your resume. In this session, I'm going to go over the basic components of the interface of Outlook 2016 so that we can get an understanding of the major components of it and get started the right way with Outlook. So let's open Outlook first. In this case, notice I have set up two accounts here, one personal and one for business. Notice that on the left hand side, we have the favorite folders. We have the business account here with all the different folders. Then we have a personal account as well with all of the different folders and this is the Gmail account. Favorite folders are specific folders from each account that we can mark as favorite. To mark another folder as favorite, we can simply go to any of those folders here on any of those accounts and right click and choose show in favorites. And that's how you'll add here another folder to show up under favorites. It's to remove it from favorites, we just right click and choose remove from favorites. So that's the left hand side. On the very top here, notice you'll have the regular menus just like any other application. You have the file menu with all kinds of options here. Notice also the options option, account settings, mailbox settings, rules and such. Then you have the home tab and this is most commonly used functions within this application basically it's giving you the general tools for the context of what you're doing and this includes creating a new mail message replying to messages forwarding them and dealing with meetings and general things that you'd be doing then notice you have the send and receive tab the folders tab viewing tab and different viewing options as well that you can change and customize. Then you have the help option. And also notice that there is a tell me feature here. Tell me what you want to do. So let's say that you want it to know about the address book and you're not sure where the address book is. You just type address here and then it's going to bring you that option. On the very top, notice that you have what's called here the quick access toolbar. These are a set of tools or icons that you can choose to enable or disable for you to quickly access. You can add uh, other icons to it. So sometimes there are specific commands that you're very commonly using in your application. And let's say that you want the delete key to always be up here or the hyperlink option or whatever it may be. 
you can go to any of those icons, whatever that icon might be, that function that you want, and right click on it and choose to add it to the quick access toolbar. And now that delete option will always be in the top left corner. To remove it from there, you can right click and choose to remove it from the quick access toolbar. So these are some of the components on the top here. So you have the, the office ribbon, and then in each section here, of the tab, you also have these subsections, for example, the delete section here, the new creating new stuff, delete stuff, responding to emails, then quick steps of what you want to do with your email, and then moving and various tags. So that's on the top. In the middle, this is the actual messages. So we are clicking on the actual folder here for the message. And these are the different messages that we have received so far. Now the message content will actually be displayed by default on the right hand side. So I click on this message and there is the content of the message here on the right hand side. With these messages, we can either reply from right here or reply to all and forward from here. So these are the controls. So basically, we start with the left hand side with our inbox, the message on the center column, and then replying and function. So we read the message from over here, and then we can reply and reply to all or such from over here from the controls on the top. So that's the default view. If you wanted to change the view to something other than what you see here, you can do that by going on the view tab and then choose how you want your viewing. So we have here the reading pane, and if you want to change it to a different viewing option, so let's say I want the messages to be viewed in the bottom, I can just choose under the reading pane, the bottom option here. And now notice, I have the messages on the top, and the preview of the messages will be in the bottom here. So I'm gonna change it to the default, the view tab since we are here under the to do bar you can choose to show the calendar on the right hand side and most of the time that will be there automatically depending on your resolution and your screen and also you can choose to show the tasks and you can choose to show also the peep pane now on the very bottom here the bottom right you can zoom in and out for your messages. So if you if the zooming for a specific message is not large enough, you can adjust that as well by using the zoom controls. In the bottom as well, you have the normal view and also you can change this to a reading view. On the bottom left here, we have the number of um, items that we have in our folder and how many messages are unread here. Now, a major component which I probably should have mentioned earlier in Outlook and the advantage of using Outlook is, is that you can actually use Outlook not only for email, which is this icon right here, or this function right here, but you can use Outlook also for the calendaring features. And that's the beauty of it. You can keep track of your own calendar and view other individuals' calendars and also make meeting invitations. And we'll try to cover those shortly. You can also keep track of contacts, and those contacts can be accessed then from multiple computers once you set up your account in multiple computers, and also in your smartphone. You can also keep track of tasks, uh, notes as well from here. So notice all of these options are here on the very bottom left of your window. You can further customize this by going here under options and choose the type of navigation that you'd like. So in my case, I might want to make this much larger so that I can view and switch from calendar to other tasks this way. Again, note that you can change this under these three dots under the navigation options. And I'm choosing here compact navigation. So from this application, you can keep track of your email, your calendar, the contacts, to-do lists, and even notes, all from one interface. And we'll move on to the next session in covering more of the features of it. We'll first stay within the email component of it and then move to the calendaring and other tasks. So stay tuned for the next session. <music>
In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the email component of Microsoft Outlook, how to create a message, to send it, how to format it, and send it to one or more individuals. So let's open Outlook. Notice on the left-hand side here, we have our favorite folders and our various accounts. So we can click here on Inbox, and notice under Inbox here, we have the mail that has come in to this specific account that has been received. Under drafts, these would be messages that we have drafted and have not sent yet. So sometimes we start a message and then Outlook saves it automatically. We forget to send it or we have to run to a meeting and you can choose to save that message as a draft and then come back to it. Under send messages, this would be the messages that we have sent out to other individuals. Deleted messages, these would be what we have deleted. Junk email, this is if your company uses filtering. And then outbox is messages that are waiting to be sent out. Typically in Outlook, the messages will be sent automatically. However, if something is stuck and not getting sent, that's where it would be temporarily stored in the outbox. So we go here under inbox. And at this point, we are going to send a new message. So I click here on new message. And notice we have the from and then the to where it's sending it to. And then we also have a carbon copy that we might want to send to somebody else. So if we want it to send to multiple people, put a semicolon and then you can put a space and then type another email address and so on. So you can send it to multiple people, multiple individuals by using semicolon. That's the trick in Microsoft Outlook. You can't put a comma. You have to use a semicolon in there for multiple addresses. The other thing is that you can put a carbon copy here if you wanted to send it to somebody else. And then you'll type the subject. So this will be just the title of the message. Typically, you want to make sure that the title of the message is meaningful so you want them to click on it and actually read your message. Next, you want to start typing the message. Uh, this is basically the message that you want them to read. Now, one thing to remember as you're using email is that spelling nowadays matters. So try to make sure that your spelling and the email content is professional. And also try not to type everything in caps. Most likely you know about that. Try to keep the formatting at a minimum and not highlighting and bold and all that type of stuff unless there is a need to do so. For the sake of demonstrating the formatting of this email, I'm going to just go and type some additional content here. And notice if I wanted bulleted lists or if I wanted uh, specific numbers, all I have to do is start typing A, for example, and now it's going to start creating the list. If we don't like ABC, notice we have these options here where we can format this and make this much fancier. So this is the basic text formatting tools, whether we want to change the font, the size of the font, and notice you can adjust the size of the font to increase the font size from these little icons here. Make this bold, italics and underline and text color and all these different options that you see over here. So these are some of the tools that have to do with the formatting of the text. If we wanted to use an address book and check the names and such, you'd use these tools over here. And then to attach a file for this, which I'll demonstrate in a moment, you'll use the attach file function here and attaching items and uh, things of that nature. So we type our message the way we want it. We can format this any way we want it. Then we want to attach the file. Now to attach a report, while we are in the new message area, we click on attach report. And one of the nice features of 2016 is actually that the most recent files that we have been using, they're going to be listed first here on the recent items. So we don't need, really need to navigate where the files are. That's in the case of where you opened the report and you worked on it for the last moment and such. So we simply click over here and then add it as an attachment. The other option is to browse my PC here for the attachment and go and find it under documents. And notice there's sales report here under documents. 
For now, I'll show you the easy way. So we click here on sales report and notice it's attached. Next, we can double check how our message looks like and we'll be able to press send. Before we press send here, I'm going to just show a couple of additional options here for tags. Sometimes the message might be of high importance and this is where you can mark it as high importance while sending it. I would suggest, however, that you use the high importance only when it is really highly important. If all the messages that you send out are of high importance when they are actually not, it could frustrate the receiver. So use this feature wisely. Under the follow-up area here, you also have an option to choose when you want to have a reminder for this. So you could set this to follow up with this next week or tomorrow and you basically just put uh, a check mark on it and it will add it to your tasks to follow up the next day and such. It will actually put a little flag next to it. And then when you're ready, you press send. At this point, the message should have been sent. Typically, it goes into the outbox first. And from there, if everything is working correctly, it uh, clears out the, uh, the outbox. And then if you wanted to see whether it was sent and what was sent, you'd go under the sent items folder. So this is what was sent. If I go here to my personal email account and I go under inbox, and this is my Gmail account, notice I will have a message with a new report attached. And as a user in my Gmail account, I can go ahead and open this report and view the contents of it. Now I can go back to my inbox and review the messages. Now in the case where a message was not deliverable, notice you'll receive an automatic email that it could not be delivered. To delete it, we can do it a couple ways here. We can either click on delete up here after we have selected the message, or we can click on the little delete option right here. Obviously, this is very basic stuff. However, this is what you'll be using 99% of the time. That's why I'm kind of covering it a little bit more in detail. So that's how you compose a message, send it to multiple individuals, uh, copy somebody as well on the message, and then checking where the send messages are, and then how you delete a message. So stay tuned for the next session that will cover how to use the email functions such as forwarding, replying, and using additional features related to email before we move into the other more advanced features such as the calendaring and contacts and tasks. <music>this session I'm going to cover some of the other basic features of using email in Microsoft Outlook. These features might still sound very basic, however, this is what you'll be using most of the time in the business environment anyway. And particularly if you're getting started with Outlook, first how to check new messages. So when you open Outlook, the new messages will be marked in bold color like this one over here in the top. Then you'll click on the folder, for example, Inbox and then click on the actual bold message. Click on it and then on the right hand side you'll see the content of the message that you received. Now to delete it, of course you could use the delete button here on the very top or next to it and notice also you have an option here to follow up with this as a to-do item if you don't have time to deal with it. So all you have to do is click on this little flag here and then notice it will add the message here to follow up with this later today on this specific message. Now, if this doesn't show up in your computer, this is available under the View tab here, and then you'll scroll down under the To-Do bar, and you choose to show the tasks or not show them from here. So notice now they have disappeared. Under the To-Do bar, you can choose Tasks. If you needed to open something that you had marked to view on it, you can simply double click on that component and it'll open up that message that you had to follow up with from before or at any point. Next, reply to this message and you can do that by simply clicking reply here on the toolbar 
on the ribbon or right above the message press reply and from here you're simply typing the message that you want to send back as you use email it's important to acknowledge the receipt of messages you simply reply to the user to the requester that you have received it and that you'll be following up with them it makes for better communication and that's effective use of email today's workplace employees and uh, supervisors and such they want you to communicate effectively with them and this is one way to communicate effectively and then from here you'd press send notice that the reply address it took it automatically it placed it in the to address and if you needed to copy somebody else this is where you'd put in their email address notice that under the message tab here there is this compose tools this is where you can use the various additional tools for formatting this message also notice that there is this option here for blind copy or the bcc the blind copy it's another option that can be added to your list of options for sending it out the bcc here the recipient is not going to know that you actually forward it or send a copy of this message or reply to anybody else so they are not going to know that you send this to the gmail address because it's a blind copy of it and then you'd simply press send in the case and i'm not sending it yet here in the case where you want to do more major formatting of this message you can also click here on pop out and this is where you have the more flexibility to format this message in a fancier way because you have a complete window that you can adjust and resize and utilize all the various other tools and then once we are set and good to go we press send and that message will be sent out as you receive messages and such you might want to reply to all reply to all i would suggest that you use it cautiously don't use it for all messages sometimes you get messages from a distribution list it can be frustrating so you want to use reply all only if you're part of a team that you're receiving communication and it is necessary for you to reply back to all the members of the team if you're ready to press reply here press send and then it's good to go and then the forward option here notice it's in both places here we click on forward and this is where we can forward this message to somebody else all you have to do here is just press 2 and then under the recent people put in their email address and then press send when you're ready to send it if you want to discard the message of course notice you have the option for discarding it so that's how you reply to a message that's how you forward it and that's how you reply to all the individuals as part of a group <music>
and then select however many columns and rows you want to use for this table. Once you have inserted the table or this object, notice that we have a couple new tabs that show up here. We have the design tab and the layout tab. Those are actually tools. They are referred to as the contextual tools, tools that show up in the context of what we are doing. In this case, we are working with a table and we have the table tools. Here we can change the design of this table and pick one of those designs instead of spending all afternoon formatting this. We can just use one of those styles from the table tools. You have all kinds of other options here in the style. You can change the shading if you want it manually, add a border and other types of things. Then you'd fill in the information as part of this table and you get the idea and then but still change the layout. We could add additional rows and columns. We could uh, distribute the formatting of each uh, cell here differently and just put the numbers in there. Once we move out of the table, we go back to the insert tab and we could add pictures and the pictures could be from the web or wherever or from the computer. So if we had pictures here saved, we could do that from the computer, simply select it or we could go and insert pictures from online here and simply search here for Outlook. We can also change the type of picture that we want, whether it's clip art or an actual picture, and click on it and click on insert. Now, remember, whenever you're copying and sending pictures from the web, keep in mind copyright as well. In this case, notice it's Creative Commons, which means we can use this giving credit to and you can learn about Creative Commons licenses over here. Notice it put here the Creative Commons aspect of it or the content. Notice now we have the picture tools and this is the contextual tools related to the pictures. We can format this picture with a simple click on it and make it much more fancier. There's a drop down and you can customize this further as well the text wrapping and additional options such as cropping the picture and things of that nature. By the way, the best way to learn about this stuff is simply to tinker with it. Just click on stuff, look as to what the options are on the ribbon and customize it that way. Additionally, you can insert shapes here. And one of the things with shapes is, is that you have to actually draw the shape in here then you can choose from here, you can choose styles for the shapes as well. And you can manipulate it however you prefer to change it. And all of this is part of an actual message that you are sending. Under the insert tab, notice you could even insert icons if you prefer to. And this is kind of new in Outlook 2016 with the latest version of it. So click on an icon, and it'll just simply add a fancy icon in here. Of course, to move them around, so you need to, whenever you're using this stuff, you want to make sure that the formatting makes sense. Of course, we are adding too many things at so this, it's gonna be slightly busy, but you get the idea. You're under insert as well now in the, in the later versions of it. There are also 3D objects that you could insert, and these would be from the web. And you could make this even fancier as you're sending it to your users. Now, because this is part of the email, we just need to create some more space here and insert this object however you want. Notice the smart art. These are just predefined infographics to illustrate an idea. Of course, these would be more useful in Word or PowerPoint, but you can use them in Microsoft Outlook as well. So you could define a process and all that type of stuff. Notice how the text here adjusts automatically. And again, for the contextual tools, you have the various color schemes that you can apply to this object. Now, if we add more components here under insert, and then we go and add, for example, charts. Charts sometimes would be very helpful. Now this is very similar to Excel. You can pick the type of chart here and then simply click on OK. And then 
work with the data. Here you change the data type, so put the actual sales for each month. So let's say we have January, and then we want to have the months, and then you have the online and on-site sales, for example. And if, let's say, you don't want to use one of those columns, you can exclude it by dragging this blue line. If you want to learn more about this stuff, uh, you can actually check out the Excel tutorial or the PowerPoint tutorial. So once we are done with the chart data, we can close it. And then if we click on the chart again, notice we have the chart tools very similar to contextual tools for other components that we used earlier. Additionally, as you're planning your messages and working on your messages under the Insert tab, notice you can do screenshots and you can um, add smart art and even symbols and things of that nature. Now, the one other concept that I wanted to demonstrate to you is that um, for each one of those objects, whether it's an image or an object or text here, you can also insert hyperlinks. So if I select here these, this object, hyperlink, I could link this to a tutorial on YouTube, for example, or, or some other object or a sales report on the website or a document or things like that. So in that case, simply select the object, or it could be text, click here on link, and then I just post the address there. When they receive the message and they click on it, then uh, it'll take them to that URL. Same way you could select part of the text, click on link, add the URL that you want to take them to. And notice now this is in blue. However, for the image here, the user most likely will not know it is clickable. So in a nutshell, that's how you create professional looking emails in Microsoft Outlook. It depends on the time that you want to invest in designing the message, how fancy you want it to look, and take the time to compose it but again, the more professional it is, the better it is in the workplace. So once you're ready to send this, then you can click on send and the message will be delivered. Now, if I go here to my personal email and click on the sales report, notice that I received here my message and this is to an external system. This is the image, this is the hyperlinked option for the text that I had hyperlinked earlier, takes you to the YouTube channel, and then this is also hyperlinked as we did earlier, then we have these images and smart art and charts that we sent. So this is to an external system even outside of Microsoft Exchange. So that's how you send the message out from Microsoft Outlook. If you wanted to check what you sent out, again, you go under the Send Items, and the messages that you send out will be listed in there. So stay tuned for the next session on sending a message using the address book in Microsoft Outlook. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the address book or the company address book in Microsoft Outlook to send messages out, to find the addresses, and then add them to the blind copy or to the copy field for sending emails out to other users. So to create a new message, we click here on new email, and then we can simply either type the address of the individual where we want to send this message to over here. And then remember, you need to put semicolons to separate them, or you can use the address book. The address book, you can access it either from here under address book or you can click on the to field over here and then click on the global address book. Under the global address book, we can see the individuals or we can search by last name. I'm going to search for generic accounts for privacy purposes, of course. So let's say we want to search by last name and notice the email address will be displayed on the right hand side. Other information uh, such as title and location and all that type of stuff will be displayed on the right hand side. To add it to this list of recipients, I can simply double click on it and it will be added under the to field. Or if I wanted this under the CC field, I can simply click here on CC after having selected this address. Or if I want it in the blind copy field, and let me search for another address here. 
I can simply search for it, press go, select the right address book, and then go in the BCC field or any of the fields that I want this to be inserted or sent to. So you can search by simply navigating or you can search by more columns here and then typing in their last name or their first name and choose go and then put them in the right field area here and then click OK. Once you have them in this view, then you can type your subject and then type your message and all that type of stuff and then press send. I will also cover it in more detail the using uh, the address book when we actually cover the contacts information here or the people option within Microsoft Outlook. One other feature here that I'd like to demonstrate before I move to the next segment is how to save this message as a draft. So there might be times where you're spending quite a bit of time in developing a, and, and uh, composing an email message, but then you have to run to a meeting or something you want to be, uh, you're distracted. How can you save this message? To save the message, all you have to do is, while you have it open, you click on save here, and then you can safely close this. Now, when you come back from your meeting, you can simply go here under the drafts folder within your Outlook folder, and then you'll see the message that you had from before. Now here you can either keep on typing and add more content to this, or you can click on pop out and that'll bring it up in a bigger window and you can still keep on working with this message. Once you're ready, you can press send here and it'll send the message out. So that's how you can use the address book from Microsoft Exchange at your company or personal address books as well that you might have in your computer with a personal account. And that's how you also can save a message as a draft and be able to pull it back. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a signature for your email messages so that whenever you send an email out, your signature will be automatically attached, as well as whenever you reply to a message to create a signature for any replies to messages that you send out. A couple ways to do it, but the simplest is by clicking here and add a new email. And then the easiest is to go under the option here under signature, click on signature, click on signatures again, and then here is where we create our signature. So we click on new and then you give it any name. It doesn't matter what name, but this is just an identifier. Then you click OK. Then down here, this is where you can put anything that you want to be inserted automatically as part of your message. Instead of having to type your name all the time, and you can basically put in whatever you want in there. So your title, your department, your contact information, and all that type of stuff. You can also insert here an image as part of your signature for your email. Note that images by default, they might not be displayed on the other side as you use images as well. Here you can also paste, for example, your logo from your institution and such. So you simply uh, go ahead and copy it from the web and then paste it in there, or you can use any of these options right here as well to upload the picture from your computer. You can also hyperlink so that your signature, when somebody goes to whatever your position or your department or your institution, you can hyperlink it to go, for example, to your address, and that will be automatically hyperlinked. So basically you specify as part of your signature anything that you want to be inserted automatically. Then over here in the top, when do you want to use this signature? Here I want to use this for all the new messages. So I click here, anytime I create a new message, I want to use this signature and then click OK, and now that signature has been created. Now, if I wanted to create other signatures for replying to messages, I could simply come here and choose a new signature, and then define your signature that you want whenever, anytime you press reply to a message. Now, notice here it says 
For new messages under the options, it's going to use the signature for new messages that I created earlier. For replies, I could use the signature for replies, assuming we filled this out and formatted it appropriately. Then I click OK. Now, anytime I go here to create a new message, notice my default signature will be created automatically or added automatically that I created earlier. And then if I go to reply to a message, let's say I got this message from earlier, I press reply, notice my reply signature has been entered automatically. So that's how you create and define the signatures and that's how you can make them part of your message, whether for new messages or for replies. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to search for messages in your email account. With the emergence of fancier email applications, such as, for example, Gmail, where the search capabilities are really powerful, Outlook as well has fairly good capabilities in you being able to search for messages. And the easiest to search for the messages is by going to your account, whichever account you're using here, and then notice you have search current mailbox. Now this will search everything in that mailbox. So you can change here to search only the current folder or subfolders. So let's search for the current mailbox. You probably noticed that I had a lot of uh, Lowe's marketing stuff here. So let's say type Lowe's here and then hit enter. And all the messages from Lowe's will be displayed here. Or let's say I wanted the word report. And then this will display the messages that have the word report in it. Now notice that there is all kinds of other stuff here. That's because there are some other additional reports in there. Or if I do the word test, notice it displays the message. Now once you find the message, you see it here, you can simply click on it and it will be displayed on the right hand side. So that's how you search for messages. If you are getting too many results and such, you can pick to use the current folder. That means that in this case, it's going to search only the inbox for those test messages. If I wanted to search on a specific other folder, I can go to that folder here and then just type the word test. And notice there are two test messages for the current folder under the sent. If for some reason, your search results are not working quite as well, start typing in the search area. And then notice also there is a recent searches option. And there are additional options here for defining the locations that you want to search and then the advanced find option where you can specify additional parameters, whether it has specific keywords in the title or from a specific individual and things of that nature. So the search capability, it's actually quite powerful in Microsoft Outlook. If for some reason Outlook is not doing the search properly, then it could be potentially related to the indexing status here, the indexing option that you might have to rerun the indexing in Outlook. Or my suggestion is that if you still cannot find what you need, check with a webmail application from your Microsoft Exchange server. So you just go to mail dot whatever your company name is and then from webmail it seems like the Exchange, Microsoft Exchange, does a much better job with the searches rather than with an Outlook. In this next session, I'm going to demonstrate how to create folders in your Microsoft Outlook account and then move messages from one folder to the other. So notice here under each account that I have here in Microsoft Outlook, I have also these folders. So these are the default folders such as inbox, drafts, send messages, junk mail, outbox and such. So let's assume that I wanted a new folder here. You can right click on one of the folders here or on your account and choose new folder. And then simply type in there the folder name and then hit enter. I could go also and create another subfolder by right clicking on the actual folder, choose new folder and I could call it when working with folders, you can actually move this folder at any other location that you want. If the folder has subfolders, notice that there is a little triangle in front of it and you can click to expand it and hide the subfolders. Additionally, 
any of these folders you can make them so that they show up under the favorites and you can right click here and choose show in favorites and notice it will be displayed up here in favorites if you don't want it in favorites anymore you can right click and choose to remove it from favorites and it will just be displayed under the actual inbox or that account now to move messages from one folder to the other you can click on the mail message and then click on move up here under the quick steps and then choose to move it to a specific folder for example under work related and then press save that's one way to do it the other way to do this is by simply dragging this message and dropping it in that specific folder or subfolder that you want it and now it's going to be displayed in that subfolder so the idea is, is that you want to kind of organize your email even though you can use the search capabilities it's kind of an easier way to identify and search for certain things keeping them organized in folders and subfolders now there might be times where you want to actually move multiple messages from one folder to the other in that case you can simply hold down the control key and pick individual messages that you want to move and notice I'm scrolling down here and basically you're holding down the control key and picking multiple messages that you want to move and then drag them to wherever you want to drag them and now they have been moved to that folder the other option is to arrange your messages you click here under all and then go under arrange by notice by default it's by date and that's what you want typically but for now since we are just moving this stuff around a manipulation of a bulk messages we go here under from and the system is going to categorize all the messages from a specific sender and then you can select a whole bunch of messages at the same time and here i'm holding down the shift key i start at a certain point scroll down to where i want to end here so start at one point move however far down you need to and then click at the end so now the system is going to select from where i started to the last point i clicked and now i can simply drag those messages to the folder where i can choose the move to option right here to move them to a specific folder and now if i go under the work related i move a whole bunch of them from here and as we are messing with the, um, the folders and the views here notice that you can rearrange the view here by simply dragging this to the left or to the right and then it will display those folders accordingly here to save us space but this is the default so that's how you create folders that's how you move folders around and then move messages into specific folders <music>
and then I want this to be even sent to you, so you could have it sent to somebody else. You could uh, send it to yourself or forward it to somebody else. And also you could have display an alert or play a sound or do something additional. Now, we, we could also, again, move this to a specific folder. Let's assume these are the business ones or work related, so you can go to any of these. Click OK. And then you can also go under advanced options and pick additional options from here. So if it has of high importance or if it has it sent only to me or any of these actions, notice it adds it to the bottom of this list. So it's doing multiple criteria to apply this rule. So you can get as granular as you want with this, then click on next then you can choose what to do with the message. You can print it, mark it, flag it, do any of these functions. And of course, you'd want to use this cautiously. Then you click on Next, and you can add exceptions here and pick those cautiously as well. And then you can run this rule already for the inbox messages, and you can turn this rule on or off. Then press Finish. And now the system should have applied this rule for any messages in the inbox. If you go here under rules, you can also manage the existing rules that you have created and customize, enable and disable those rules as well. So the idea here is to create rules to manage your email flow and weed out the junk mail, but at the same time also to troubleshoot if something is not coming in, your messages are not being delivered, then you might want to take a look at the rules and deactivate them temporarily to sort out what the problem is for you not receiving the emails. Test it out and that's how this option would work. In this session I'm very briefly going to cover how to mark messages as junk and add them to the junk folder. And notice I have these low messages that I'm receiving. In my case, if I don't want to receive those anymore, of course, I could either choose to unsubscribe to their site and such, provided they unsubscribe you. But let's assume I don't want to unsubscribe to those messages. In my case here, I can simply right click and then choose here the option to block the sender. Any new messages from that sender will be blocked in the future or will not be delivered in my inbox. The other thing is that I can go here under the junk mail options. I could say choose the level of junk mail that I want to enable in my inbox and I can choose low or high and such and it will add them to the junk mail. I could choose here under safe senders to allow specific emails so that they never end up in the junk mail option and safe recipients the same way. And then blocked senders, I could add somebody manually here, the email address to block them from emails coming in. And additional top level domains that you can block from here. So that's controlling the junk mail filters. For this specific message, I could choose junk and then block the sender. And then it says the sender lows at elows.com has been added to your blocked senders list and the messages have been removed from the junk folder. So we click OK. And now those messages coming in in the future, they'll be removed. Notice that there is one more here. That's because this was from here from before. Now we're defining this for new messages in the future. So that's how you define the filters. That's how we define them. And also that's how to block a specific sender in Outlook. The other function that I wanted to show you is how to follow up with a specific message. So let's say I have this message called test message, and let's assume this is an important message that I want to follow up with in the future. So I go here to my message, and then I could categorize this message under the categories here. I could put this in the blue category or green category or whatever. And uh, these are the default categories that Outlook has. However, I could go here under all categories, and I could create my own new category, and I click on new. And then I want to mark all the clients, for example, the specific color code, dark green here. You can also specify a control key 
to mark that message using a shortcut on your keyboard and then click OK. Now if I click OK here, I'm marking this message with a specific color code. If I go to another message here, I could mark that in the blue category or orange or red category or whatever category, but you're basically assigning categories to each one of the messages so that later you could go and sort these by category or so that they stand out. So that's one way to assign categories to each message. And notice there's a little green block here. The other thing that you can do is you can choose to follow up with specific messages and it will put them in your task list here on the right hand side. So you can flag them and the flagging what it will do is as you have your messages in your inbox you have these little flags next to each message that you can follow up later or at some point. So it's kind of a reminder tool for you to view them. The other thing is, is that on the right hand side, if you have the tasks being displayed here and the way you control tasks is on the home tab, you go under view and you choose under the to do bar, you choose to display the tasks. Once you have the tasks enabled to be displayed, then you can simply double click on that task. Those messages will show up right here. You can double click on the task or in that email and it will open up the email that you need to follow up with. And then from here you reply, you send it forward or delete it or whatever you need to do from here that you chose to follow up. So notice you have different options here to follow up if you need to change it, follow up this week, next week, follow up today and such. The other thing is that you can add reminders for those messages as well by clicking on add reminder and then it'll, you'll have to choose a time and date when you want a reminder for this message. When you're all said and done with the message, you can either mark it as complete from here, or you, if you open up the message, you can choose to mark it as complete from here as well. And it puts a check mark. And notice you can right click, choose mark as complete, and choose to follow up with these whenever. So, the way to assign this is uh, either from up here under the toolbar or right clicking on the message and choose to follow up at a specific time and date. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to set up out of office replies or automated replies for your email in Microsoft Outlook 2016. So suppose you're going on vacation for a week or two, hopefully two, right? we want to set up automatic replies. To do that, we go here under File, and then we go here under Automatic Replies. Now, under Automatic Replies, all you have to do is click on Send Automatic Replies, and then you can specify to send the replies automatically so it engages a specific time and date, and then it will disengage automatically on that. So you can set the time here, the date, and then you can have this for multiple days if you want and then the end point and then for people inside of my organization so that would be anybody with your domain email address or the accounts on a microsoft exchange they would receive this automated message so you type your message in there what you want to be sent automatically you can copy this as well and then for people outside of the organization you can choose whether to send automatic replies as well and you can use the same one by pasting it in here. You can choose to send it to anyone outside of the organization or just contacts that are in your address book and such. Under rules here, you can choose to specify rules and conditions as well. So if it's from a specific individual, then to take a specific action to forward it to somebody else or to reply to the specific template. So if it's from your boss, then you say, I'm on it. If it's from junk mail, then you can have a specific other template as well. I'm not going to get into that at this point because it's a little bit more complicated, but for the sake of what you'll be doing most likely is engaging and setting up the auto reply, specifying the dates, the start and end time, keeping in mind that the system will uh, enable it or disable it automatically based on those parameters. Type the messages for inside of the organization or outside of the organization 
and then click OK. And now at this point, uh, the automatic reply has been configured. And when the time parameters kick in, it'll be automatically engaged. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the calendar feature in Microsoft Outlook. The calendar in Microsoft Outlook is a very powerful feature that is integrated within Microsoft Outlook along with email, contacts, and tasks, and such. And that's what makes Microsoft Outlook so powerful in a business environment. The calendar feature not only allows you to keep track of your own appointments for specific dates and times, but it also allows you to schedule meetings with others and invite them to meetings and check their calendar and all that type of thing. Once you open Outlook, you have your emails and such, but here in the bottom left, you also have the option for a calendar. Now on the left hand side, you'll have the dates and times for the calendar. Further down, you'll have the multiple calendars that you might have access to. By default, you have access to only your own calendar. However, if other users choose to share their calendar with you, you'll be able to have access to their calendar as well over here and we'll learn about that later. So basically, you have the months and the dates here on the left and then on the right hand side you have these different views. Notice you have the today's view, the next seven days. You have the view for just today, next seven days. The work week, it's skipping the Saturday and Sunday here the monthly view, and then just the scheduled view. So you're just looking at specific days and what your calendar looks like the, for those specific days. Manage calendars where you can open somebody else's calendar and group calendars, and you can email the calendar, share your calendar and publish it and all that type of thing and check the calendar permissions. So typically in day-to-day -day work, you're going to probably use the day view first or the work week view, one of those views. Now, to create an appointment, there are a couple ways to do that. You could be on any of those views. It doesn't matter which one. But the day view, let's say I go here. It's about 12 o'clock. Let's say at 2 o'clock. I select the block of time. And then I just type the appointment that I want to create. So, for example, and then simply hit Enter. At this point, notice that once I hit Enter, the appointment has been entered. At this stage, I have additional options here that show up about my appointment. So I could choose to show this as busy or tentative or I'm free and such or out of the office. So free, of course, that means that somebody else can schedule an appointment with me. My calendar will look free to others, even though I have something scheduled for it. Working somewhere else and such or tentative and busy and out of office, of course, that means what they say and somebody will see that you're busy at that particular point in time for that block of time. Another way to create an appointment is by simply clicking here on new appointment and then putting the subject and then here I'm putting more details about my appointment. I could put uh, my location, the date and time, how long it's going to be and then I can put also additional details about my appointment. Additionally you have more options as you can see and we'll touch on some of those other ones such as the scheduling assistant and notes and all that type of thing shortly here you notice you have this recurrence option and this is how you can make a meeting so it shows up every let's say this meeting takes place monthly on the 21st of every month and then you want to end it after 10 occurrences so that's how you do a repeating meeting so pick your parameters here and then click OK and then press save and close. Now, if we go into the monthly view, this will show up the same way from month to month. It's added to your calendar. So that's how you create a meeting for personal use and also create that meeting so that it shows up from month to month. You can also create a meeting for a specific date by simply going to the date first here on the calendar. So let's say you want to create a meeting for the 18th of uh, January. Click on the 18th here. It takes you directly to that date and then pick the time. So 8 to 9 and the meeting has been entered. 
I also specify whether this meeting is private or not. Notice up here on the very top, there is this option for private. When you mark a meeting as private, that means that if you give access to an assistant or somebody else, when you give them access, you can choose not to share the private meetings. It will just show the time as busy for you, but they'll not see what you're doing. This would come in handy, for example, you're using your work calendar for personal meetings in the evenings and weekends, take out the trash or whatever. Your assistant doesn't need to know that at 7 o'clock you're going to take out the trash. You can just mark this meeting as a private meeting. So this is how you control it. You go right here under this and you choose to mark it private. As far as the sharing aspect of it, I'll cover that in a separate video shortly. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to invite others to meetings using the Microsoft Outlook calendar. Microsoft Outlook, besides using it for email, can also be used in a powerful way for collaborating with others and choosing the best times to meet and coordinate the meetings with others in your team and in your organization. And that's the main powerful features of Microsoft Outlook, particularly in the corporate environment. It makes it a lot easier to determine what time and when they are available without having to go back and forth with multiple emails as to when was available. For the sake of demonstration, I cannot use real accounts here for other users. So I have two accounts that we are going to tinker with and hopefully you'll get the idea as to how to send the alerts and to requests. Basically, once you're in Outlook, then you need to click here on the calendar option. Choose any of those views. Right now it's on the work week. And let's say that for tomorrow on Wednesday, I want to send a meeting request with somebody else. Well, let's say I want my meeting to be at 10 o'clock. So I can either click here on new meeting or I can simply double click on this time slot from 10 o'clock and I can put my details for the meeting right here. Specify the location for the meeting, beginning time, end time. You can put the different requirements for it. And then click here under the scheduling assistant. This is going to give you your own calendar. However, you can click here under add attendees, search the global address list in your company for another user in that company. So I'll choose here instructor. It's a generic account and then I'll add them either as required or optional so you can pick and choose multiple users in your company from here and let's say I choose test here and I have two other users and I'll make them as optional attendance and then click OK now the system displays their availability and their calendar by default in Microsoft Outlook all other users within Microsoft Exchange, they can see when somebody is available. They can't see what you're doing during that time, but they can see when you are available for a meeting with them. The spots in white, that means that they are available. The ones in blue, that means that they are not available. For these other two accounts, that means that they are not using the calendar feature here. Therefore, no information is available. If I wanted to make it an hour long, I have a conflict with my own schedule here. So you'll also notice some suggested times here on the right hand side. Notice that they are a little bit earlier in the day for those. However, you can also go and pick here additional times. You can see and pick here the exact block of time that would fit your need where it's available and open. Once you click the specific time that makes sense to you, you can choose a reminder, then you and the person you're requesting a meeting with will be reminded at whatever time you specify here, and then choose whether this is reoccurring or not. Then once you have selected the appropriate time, you can go back to the appointment area and put additional notes that you want to put in this area here. Go here under insert and insert an attachment if you want it for the meeting then press send at this point the meeting will be added to your calendar as well as the recipient 
will receive an email. The email will look like this and it will basically say please respond and I'm accessing this via webmail. If we open this in Microsoft Outlook, it will be something very similar to this. It's basically saying that your request is from such and such an individual and then the meeting is going to be on such and such a time. This is the attachment. As a user, you can choose to accept it, mark it as tentative, or decline it. If you choose to decline it, the sender is going to receive an alert that the meeting has been declined, and they'll receive an alert provided you choose that you want to send the response back. You can send the response automatically whenever you press a check mark here. Sometimes you can accept the meeting without sending a response. Other times you might be best if you're not going to be attending the meeting to just choose edit the response first. Then press send here and this is the recipient on the other end that is sending this. And if we go back here to Outlook, notice I received a confirmation that it has been accepted and this will also be in my email here. So it will say accepted meeting for sales 2018 and also it will display the note from the requester. I could actually go here to my calendar and double click on it and here it says that one has accepted it, zero have declined. And so if you're planning a meeting with multiple individuals, this is a great way for you to coordinate when everybody is available and also track who has accepted it and who has not. Now the way to track the exceptions is by going here under the tracking option within your appointment. I just double clicked on the appointment. You click on the tracking option and then you'll be able to see who accepted it and what the responses were. Now sometimes there might be cases where you need to reschedule the meeting and you want to send an alert to the individuals and such. In that case all you have to do is go back to your calendar, go back to your meeting and then change the time and date for the meeting. Now as you're doing this you might want to check for example to use also the scheduling assistant after you have picked the time and date. You check the availability here. Notice on the 24th there is not much happening for either one of us here for Friday. Then you select the new time and you go back to your appointment and then you can put notes and give more details. And then notice press send update here and then the recipients on their end will receive an email like this. The old date has been crossed out, the new one, and you need to respond to it. These are the responses from the user side of things. They'll press to send the response as attending it. And then you as the planner and co coordinator of the meeting, you will receive an alert of the new confirmation from the individual that you invited. So it will be here under the email that they accepted it. And also you can go under the calendar location, double click on it and then go under tracking and you can see who has accepted it and who has not. So that's how the whole process works on inviting somebody for a meeting, coordinating the best time for everyone, and checking the tracking who has accepted the meetings and who has not. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to share your calendar with somebody else. There are times where in a business environment you want to share your calendar so that somebody else has access to it to either view the available times or to even manage your schedule. Uh, by the way, remember that this is recorded in 1080p and it's best to view this tutorial in full screen for better quality and better resolution. So to share your calendar in Microsoft Outlook, and there are a couple ways to do it. You can either go here under Share Calendar on the top or you can right click on your own calendar here and choose Share. Now if we go here under Share Calendar on the top, click on Share and then simply put in the email address of the user with whom you want to share your calendar. We'll share this with the online instructor account and then you can also ask them for permission to view their calendar as well at the same time. 
as you're sharing your calendar, you need to define what permissions do you want to grant to them. So in this case, you go here under details, and you can choose limited details, full details, and such. Just see the full details, they would see all the details about that specific meeting. So you choose the proper options that you want to share, and then press send. It wants to confirm that we want to still share our calendar with these permissions. You say yes and confirm this. The recipient on their end will receive an email very similar to this. They'll click on it and they'll choose to accept the invitation to view the calendar. Now, if we, and by the way, I'm using the web version or Outlook web for here to access the email account of the uh, person that we shared the calendar with. So uh, here they'll click on accept and then notice under calendars here they can view their own calendar which is this one the one in blue or they can view also the distance learning uh, staff account. In this case I don't have any appointments entered but let me say I want to enter an appointment right here. And now if we go here on the web of the recipient's account Notice that um, that appointment now has been uh, synced and it's available and accessible. So that's how you share your calendar with somebody else. You can also check the permissions for uh, your calendar and assign multiple individuals multiple levels of access to your calendar. So the way you do that is by clicking, you click here on your own calendar, and again, we are back to Outlook at this point, and then go under Calendar Permissions, or right-click and choose Properties. So either one of them, it should get you to the same thing. Now, if we go here under Calendar Permissions, or right-click on Properties, it'll bring up to, to this. Here, notice these are the default permissions, and other individuals, by default, they can view the free and busy times for us. If you don't want them to view anything of your calendar, you can change the defaults over here. Now, notice that Online Instructor, we uh, shared our calendar a moment ago with them, these are the permissions that have been granted to the online instructor. If you want them to view also additional details, they, you can change the permissions right here. You can also add other permissions in there. And you can add an, an, another individual in here and grant them specific permissions to your calendar. You can uh, give them full details to your calendar. They can create folders and subfolders and all that type of stuff here. So basically, you're giving them the reviewer permission in this case. To remove somebody from your permissions list, you can simply click here under the, that individual account and then choose to remove that individual from the permissions and then simply click OK. So that's how you share your calendar with somebody else and that's how you view the permissions of your calendar with other individuals that you have granted access to. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to give delegate permissions to someone else to your calendar and also uh, your account in Microsoft Outlook. Delegate access is basically somebody creating appointments, managing your calendar, and creating entries as if it were you. So we go here under File, and then we go here under Account Settings, and then we choose Delegate Access. We choose uh, the option for Add and then we search for the individual. We find the account that we want to give delegate access to. We click on Add, and then click OK. We can give access in a granular way to various aspects of our calendar here. So notice, and also other options as well in Microsoft Outlook. So uh, notice that uh, you can choose whether the delegate uh, receives copies of meeting-related requests. So this is where you can control whether somebody will receive those email requests on your behalf. Now for tasks, you can control the properties for here, whether they can create and edit and modify, or whether they get no access to your tasks. Inbox, this is for email. This is where you're granting them access 
to create and send email on your behalf and author and create items so you can choose the appropriate option here then under contacts as well the same thing and then also for the notes so you basically grant them specific access to each individual item you can also choose whether the delegates can see private items. Private items are when you create an, uh, in your calendar a meeting, but you mark it as private. This is how you can control whether they can view your uh, private meetings or not. And then you can also send them a quick email that you have granted them permissions and such. Then you click OK here. And then notice you can see who has delegate access and you can view the permissions and other properties in here then click OK now in the recipients mailbox they'll have received an email similar to this and again I'm using the uh, Outlook web access here and it's summarizing the permissions that you have granted to that specific individual so that's how you share your mailbox and the mailbox items such as a calendar contacts and tasks and such with someone else. In the next couple of minutes I'm going to demonstrate how to open a shared calendar. So I'm going to start by first sharing the calendar with somebody else and then opening that shared calendar. Because I'm using both Outlook and I need access to two accounts, I'm going to open the second account here via the Outlook web mail. The individual that wants to give me access um, in their account here. So we go under the calendar, click on the calendar, and then choose Share on the top. Or you can right click and choose sharing permissions. Either one of those, it's the same way. So then here under share with, I want to share the calendar from the online instructor account with a distance learning staff account. So I go here and share it with a DL staff. And then here you can choose how you want to share your calendar. It's very similar to the previous session that we did on sharing the calendar from Outlook. We can choose to give them the specific permissions, including the delegate permission. And in this case, I'm just simply going to say full details. That means that they can view the full details and then simply press send. Now at this point, the recipient will get an email with a link to open the shared calendar. Notice if I go to my email now, the distance learning staff account, and then notice you have the option for accepting the invitation to open that shared calendar. Now, if I choose to accept it from here, it takes me directly to my calendars, or I could have gone to calendars here uh, sometime later and notice the shared calendar for online instructor. If you don't want it, you can simply uncheck it here and it will be not displayed. Of course, as you are working with a calendar, remember that you have these different views on the top as well. If you're working with shared calendars, uh, remember you can also overlay those calendars. I don't have too many meetings at this point in these calendars because it's just for the sake of the tutorial. But you can actually right click on one of the calendars here and choose overlay. And it's basically going to overlay one on top of the other. If you don't want the overlaying anymore, you can simply right click and choose to change the overlay. Remember as well, when you're working with shared calendars or any types of calendars, you can search for specific appointments and things of that nature here on the top right side. And it should display the different uh, meetings and uh, search your calendar for all the different meetings that you have. To clear the filter, you simply click on the X here on the top right. If for some reason you don't want access to that specific calendar anymore, you can just right click on it, choose delete calendar. That's going to delete it only from your account from showing up. It's not going to delete that individual's account. If for some reason you didn't get that email to open the shared calendar or the individual didn't send you the option for the email, you can also open a calendar by going to the calendars option here. And then you click on open a shared calendar or open a calendar and you can choose from the address book or under the shared, open a shared calendar. And then you search for the name of the individual that has uh, potentially shared it with you. 
and notice since they had shared it with you the system just opens it and it will be added to your list of calendars if they had not shared it with you already then you can ask for permission to share it and they have to grant you permission first that's how you share a calendar from outlook web and then open it here in uh, Microsoft Outlook. The reason why we had to use the Outlook web again, it was because of the dual account thing for the sake of this tutorial. In this session, we are going to explore the People Hub in Microsoft Outlook. One of the nice features of Outlook is, is that it incorporates multiple modules. We discussed so far the uh, mail module. We discussed the, the calendaring option for making appointments and scheduling events and things of that nature. And now we are going to explore the people module. People module, it used to be called contacts in the previous versions of Outlook, and it's still the same type of idea. You're managing the uh, people or the contacts in your and Microsoft Outlook. So we click here on people in the bottom, uh, bottom left. Of course, you have the list of contacts. You can uh, search for these uh, contacts. And then typically it will display the information here on the right hand side if there was uh, further information. Now, in my case, I just imported some very basic information for each individual but uh, typically you'd have a lot more information on the right hand side. You have the different letters of the alphabet, so if you, have, uh, t if you want to list all the people starting with G, uh, or in this case it's by last name, so G uh, sorting them by last name, so we can skip to that specific letter, and then the details, once we click on each individual, the details will show up on the right hand side. Now, if we wanted um, a different view for this, notice that uh, right here under the current the different views, the current view, you can change this. So that default is the people view. And then if you want the business card, something like this, if you want to see the full card, the full card it would be basically all the information related to that individual and um, that we have entered in my case again I don't have that much information entered so not much is going to be displayed but that's how you change it if you want to just view their phone numbers if you want to view a listing of them additionally here on the left hand side you have the options for creating a new contact so that'll display in a moment then creating a group a, a distribution list uh, deleting the contact, of course, you can do it from here, and then scheduling a meeting with that specific individual from here, and so on. Then further uh, to the right, you can create a mail merge directly from the contacts option, and some of these options, I'll cover them in a moment as well, but for now, we are just exploring this general hub or the, this module within Microsoft Outlook. And then if somebody shared contacts with you, you'd open those shared contacts from this option as well. Additionally, you can categorize those uh, specific contacts by choosing specific categories or color-coded categories. And if you don't like some kind of code or setting here, you can uh, create new categories from the All Categories option. Following up and also marking uh, a contact as private, that typically is useful if you don't want your assistant, let's say you have given delegate access to somebody for your full mailbox or just contacts or a specific module and you're marking a, a contact or an item as private, in that case, by default, the delegates cannot view the private contacts or items. Now to create a contact, you click here on a new contact and then basically just fill in all this information for that specific contact. So we put in the full name, the job title, the email address, and basically fill in the web page, the business address, home address, and such. Then you put in their phone number, the home number, fax, mobile, and all that type of thing. Additionally, you can place notes in here as well. So basically the idea here is to place as many details as you can for this contact. Notice you also can add a picture to your contacts by clicking on the picture item right there. And uh, you have to locate the picture that you have for Huber. 
then click OK and notice the picture will be placed as part of that contact. Then we click on Save and Close and now that uh, should be listed here under Hubert Sims. So notice it's down here. And notice at this point it's displaying all the different fields that we have completed or filled up for this contact. So that's how we create a contact within Microsoft Outlook, the People Hub or the People Module. session we are going to learn how to create a contact group or a distribution list within Microsoft Outlook. So we are here under the contacts module in Microsoft Outlook and we have these uh, specific individuals. So let's assume that every so often you need to send out an email to a distribution list. To create a distribution list we go here under new contact group and we first have to give a name for this distribution list or for this contact group. So we'll call it new faculty list. And then the next step here is to add the members to this distribution list. So we click on add members and you can add members from the Outlook contacts that you have within the people module in Microsoft Outlook or you can choose the address book. The address book is the company-wide address books in Microsoft Exchange, or you can just simply add one manually to that distribution list by typing in their email address. First, we are going to add this from the contacts that we have in Microsoft Outlook. So click on it, and then notice we have here, we can search by name, and it's gonna display all the names here of our contacts or if we wanted to search by more fields, for example, such as last name and so on, then we can just still simply type it in there and then press go and it'll display the contact that we want. You can uh, either double click on it and it'll put it under the members list here in the bottom, or if we go back to here to under name only and we browse through all of our contacts, we could simply hold down the control key and pick whichever individuals we want to add to that distribution list or to that group. Once we have selected that by holding down the control key and clicking on each name, then we click on members. That basically adds them to the members list. Then click OK. And then at this, those members that we picked have been added to the distribution list. The next thing that you need to do from with this distribution list is to save it because otherwise is you're not you're going to lose it it's like so we click here on save and close and now the distribution list should show up in the list of contacts in here now if we wanted to search for it notice i just type part of the name notice this is our distribution list and you can expand this list to view further more you can double click on it and it will open up that distribution list where you can add more individuals to it or take some individual out from here. Now to add additional members, you can go also and use the address book. If you wanted to add an address manually, you simply can fill in the display name and the um, email address. Of course, it has to be a correct email address. I'm making that up at this point. We click on OK, and it's, the system is going to add it to the distribution list. Now to save it, you simply click on Close, and it will save it. Now to use a distribution list, you simply can either come here to Contacts and then open the new faculty distribution list by just double-clicking on it, and then choose here to email them. So this is one option. And then just simply type in the subject and then the message, simply press send, just like you'd send another email. Now, all the members in that distribution list will receive the email. Now, keep in mind also the distribution lists, you cannot make them with thousands and thousands of email addresses. That's because certain email systems, they'll limit the number of recipients within a distribution list. So therefore, it's best to have those lists in smaller chunks or smaller parts if you're going to have hundreds of them. If you're going to send to thousands of users and such, you can either consider it an email merge 
or you can consider some other tool for mass mailings and such. You can also send to a distribution list from the email module as well. So if we go back to the email module here and we click on the new email and then just start typing in here new faculty. Now, right now it's showing up for me automatically because I had used it a moment ago. But if for some reason that does not show up for you or you're not sure how to navigate to it, you can either hold down the control key and press K and it'll look it up automatically for you. That's a trick uh, for using names. Or you can click here under the two and then search for your distribution list. And notice we have new faculty here. And then click OK and now it's, uh, you can send the email that way or the control K option is basically you type part of the uh, contact's name or the distribution list name, you hold down the control key and press K, it'll um, populate that automatically for you. And it'll bring all the possible options as well. So that's how you create a distribution list or a group of contacts and that's how you send In this session, I will demonstrate how to share contacts with another individual from Microsoft Outlook. So we are here in the Contacts module or in the People module in Outlook. And notice we have here my contacts. And at this point, I want to share this with another individual. From here, I click on Contacts right below my contacts and then click on Share Contacts. And then you choose the individual that we want to share the contacts with and then press send. Notice we have to confirm the permission that we want to authorize here. Click on yes. Once you have shared your contacts with that individual, on their end they will be able to open the contacts that you have shared with them. And the way they open those contacts would be for them to go to the people module, to go under the contacts uh, option for them, and then they'll click on open shared contacts and then a search for your name, the DL staff in this case. And then the contacts that you have shared with them will show up under here, under the shared contacts. I cannot demonstrate this for now because I've had to open two separate sessions of Microsoft Outlook in order to actually demonstrate it fully. session I'm going to demonstrate how to update the contact details and also how to share your contact with another individual via email, how to send what's called a V card. Let's say we have here the Hubert account and to update that Hubert account of course we can search for it, get to this contact and then double click on it and then update any of those fields and put additional information in there and such. So uh, the idea here is to update your own contact and then uh, send this as a V card to somebody else whenever you're meeting with somebody and such. Instead of exchanging business cards, you're sending them in an electronic business card. Of course, it's important here not to include any information that you don't want them to have. So you want to kind of clean out and polish your business card with only the information that you want. Once you have updated the business card, you can click on save and close or you can actually send it from here as well. Notice you can customize all kinds of other things. It's very similar to what we did a moment ago. You can change the image size and the background and all that type of thing and customize it with all kinds of additional properties that you may want changing it just like a real business card. Click OK and then press to save the changes. And then if we wanted to send this as a business card to someone, we can click on the card name here and then you can choose to forward it, to send it. And send it as an Outlook contact or as a business card. Both of them, they'll be just like a bus uh, an attachment to that specific email. So if we choose as a business card, it'll look like that. 
and then you can send it to that specific individual. Press send, and they, on their end, when they go to their email, they'll receive an email very similar to this, and they can also notice they are getting the business card to download it as well. So if I click here to download, and then once they download it, they can add it to their contacts, whether in Windows or if they're using Outlook, they'll be able to add it to my Outlook as a contact. In some other cases where the contact already exists with uh, pretty much all the properties, you can simply click on update here and it'll update all the different properties for that contact. So that's how you update a contact, update the business card for the contact and send it to somebody else. session I'm going to demonstrate how to track email correspondence with other individuals in Microsoft Outlook by using the people pane within the email module. We are interacting back and forth with a lot of individuals and we want to make sure to see very easily all the correspondence back and forth whether it's meetings or emails and such with that individual. The trick here is to go back to the email module and then go here under the View tab in the ribbon and then enable the People pane here under People pane. Typically, by default, that is off. So we want to choose here uh, Normal. And that enables this stuff here in the bottom. All the correspondence, all the attachments, all the meetings that you have had with that individual. This is just another email, but basically for every email or every contact that you're interacting with, you're looking to all the interactions that have taken place between back and forth, whether they are mail messages, whether they were attachments, or even meetings. In this case, I don't have many meetings here, but that's where they would show up. You can also sort them either direction. Additionally, notice you can collapse this, and then when you need to, you can bring it up or down and hide it or unhide it. So this is a really powerful feature in identifying and keeping track of all the correspondence in one snapshot as you're navigating through your messages and in keeping track of what your correspondence was with that specific individual. In this next session, we're going to learn how to use Quick Steps in Microsoft Outlook 2016. The Quick Steps are a way for us to automate some of the processes in managing mail and simplifying our workflow throughout the day in Microsoft Outlook. Here's how it works. Basically, let's say we have uh, specific emails and we want to mark them with a single click as work-related or to kind of cut categorize them or have the system do something with a single click. So here in our case, let's say I want to mark this as work-related. I simply click on the message, then go here under work-related, and the system will categorize it under work-related automatically. You can uh, delete and reply to it, or you can send this to the manager or a team, or mark it as done. So if I want to mark it as done, just click on done, and then I choose to move it to a folder, and then press save. Before you start using those quick steps, it's actually important that you tweak those steps to do what you want it to do. So, if, for example, to manager, you have to define who your manager is. So it's going to forward the message to that uh, manager, but the system first needs to know who the manager is. Or if you want to say this, I want it to send it to the whole team, you have to tell the system who the team members are. So to customize those, all you have to do is you go down here to the bottom of this option here, and you choose Manage Quick Steps. Here under To Manager, uh, notice it's going to forward it, and but yet we need to specify who the manager is by clicking here on Edit, and then under the To, we need to specify the email address of the manager. And in my case, I'm going to use a generic account. It's going to forward it by default, but you can choose additional actions here as well as to what to do and, and such. But for now, it's just going to forward it by default. 
then you can also specify a shortcut for this. So if you press Control Shift and one, for example, that will uh, take that action with a single keyboard shortcut. Then you press Save. Then for the team email, you need to specify as to what you want it to do. Here it's going to create a new message, but we need to still tell the system who the team members are. You just need to keep on typing the email addresses. And you can have multiple actions again, like let's say market as important. You can choose the action here under the drop down to market as important. Then you can assign also a keyboard shortcut as well, and then click on save. You can create additional quick actions as well with that single click. So click on OK here. And now if I wanted to send, let's say, this message to my manager, you just click on manager. Notice you can customize and add a little bit of additional detail here and then press send. So it knows who to send it to and, and such. It's going to copy the message and forward it to them. If you wanted to create a team email, you simply click on team email. It's going to have all the addresses of the team. You just type in the subject. You can even pre-fill that uh, subject if you wanted by modifying the criteria there in the, or the definition of the team mail and then press send. Again, the idea here is to use those quick steps to simplify your work. So first you have to define those steps, customize the steps, and then start using them by either a shortcut key or by simply clicking on those options. This session we are going to move to another module within Microsoft Outlook and that is using tasks. So if we go here in the bottom left under the list of modules, we'll click on tasks and this is where you can see the list of tasks that you have to complete or you can define, create uh, new tasks and such. This is kind of the hub of all your tasks within Outlook. Tasks can be created as you're viewing the emails to follow up with something. So for example, in here, flag this item to follow up with it. And that will show up under tasks once I get to the tasks module. So uh, notice I can go in here and also use follow up next week or tomorrow and such. So it's going to put the flag here, but yet those tasks then will show up in the tasks module in there. Notice we said to uh, follow up with it tomorrow. It's marked here for tomorrow and this is for today. So in the tasks module in the top left here you have the option to create a new task, to create a new email, to delete specific tasks. Then you can manage those tasks and mark them as complete. So for example this one, let's say I worked on it, now I want to mark it as complete. I can mark it right here and now it will take it off the list. Additionally, here on the right-hand side, we can view various options such as the detailed items for the tasks here, a detailed view, or a simple list view, or the to-do list, what remains to be done, or view the priority by priority, active tasks that I have to complete, and completed tasks. So basically, we're just changing the different views and sorting through those different views. Remember also you can uh, search for specific tasks here on the top right by simply typing in there. So notice I'm searching for the word published and these are the two tasks that have that word in there. To clear the filter we click here on close search and then the filter will be cleared. So you have here my tasks, so you have the, uh, the to-do list, things that are uh, marked from your email, and then you also have specific additional tasks. Now to create a new task, we can either type, start typing right here, or we can go here under new task and then give it a subject. And then you can specify the start date and the end date and then whether the status, what the status is, whether you have started or whether it's in progress and such. And then you can also set a reminder, the time as well. And then you can place here details, basically all the details that you want to know. You can also schedule it so it recurs at a specific time and date. And if you want that to take place, you go here under recurrence 
and then you choose, let's say, every week on Monday, starting from this date to that date, and then end it after three occurrences. Then you click OK, and now it's going to schedule it so that it takes place in the sequence that you specified. You can also categorize this to be clients or whatever it is that you want to specify. Then you can also mark it as of high importance and then also mark it as private if you don't want your delegate uh, with whom you have shared uh, your calendar to be able to see that task. And of course, you can insert additional modules and additional things here, very similar to the email to format this however you want. So this is kind of the fancy way of customizing your task content. Then click on Save and Close. And now the task has been listed here and has been created. You can choose the different views if you wanted to. Now at certain times, you might also want to send updates for this task. So to send an update for the task, you can simply open up the task here. And then you can choose here the option to send a report. So send a report. You can put the individual's name in there. And then it's going to copy all of the details about your task. And just type a quick report. And then press Send. And that's how you send a status report. Notice um, as you are changing the status report, you can also change here the percent complete. Notice also under the status itself, you can change it to in progress and update the status as to what you want. So basically, the idea here is that you are creating tasks, keeping track of those tasks and details on them. To mark the task as complete, click here, mark as complete when ready. If you're in the uh, email module here, you can change the view so that the tasks will show up on the right panel here. To do that, you click here on view. And then you go under the to-do bar on the right-hand side, and you choose tasks here. And then the tasks will be listed so that they are available to you from a In this next session, I'm going to demonstrate how you can assign a task to someone else within your organization. This comes in handy for you to keep track or to have other individuals or with whom you work complete certain tasks and send you updates every so often. You can either use an existing task for this or you can create a new task. So let's say we create a new task here. And then the start date, let's say it will be today. The end date, it will be uh, six months from now. You can set it so that it sends a reminder, the day and the time for the reminder and such. And then the priority, you can specify whether it's high priority and such. Post the details down here. And if you wanted the recurrence as well, you can change it from here like we did earlier. To assign it, you simply click on the Assign task. Then you specify who you want to assign it to. And then you have the subject, the details for here and such. And then you want to keep an updated copy of this task in your task list. And also send me a report when the task is complete. Once Hubert, in this case, completes the task, then you'll receive a report. And also you'll be able to see the details of that task from the list of your tasks in your task list. So we press Send here. And in this case, uh, the owner of this task becomes Hubert, since we are assigning it to him. The individual will receive the task. It will show up on their task list on their uh, Microsoft Outlook account. And once it's completed, you'll receive an email. Now, for you as well, it will show up over here under the task if you chose to have it under the along with your Outlook mail here. Or it will show up on your tasks list if you wanted to send an additional note or something or an update or request a status report or what, you can simply go here under Send Status Report and just add additional details about that task. So notice it's waiting for a report from the recipient. So that will show up on their account until it's completed and marked as complete. 
So that's how tasks work in a nutshell, in creating a task, in assigning a task to another individual. And the power of Outlook here comes in being able to assign those tasks to other individuals within your team and being able to keep track of them. In this next session, I'm going to go over the Notes module within the Microsoft Outlook application. If you go here on the left-hand side, next to the Tasks item, you should be able to locate the Notes option. If you can't see it and such, uh, by the way, you can click here on Navigation Options and choose how many number of items to be showing in there. Now the notes are designed so that you can just create simple notes for you to keep track of things. This could be as simple as a telephone number if you don't want to create a contact or a note to remember to do something. These are not tasks, but uh, just a simple uh, sticky note basically. So on the note module, you'll have the notes here on the left hand side. You have um, the options to create new notes, to create new items and such, then to see the different notes uh, as a list or as an icon. In my case, I don't have many or any notes at this point, but you can change the view from here and the notes that you have created in the last seven days. Now to create a new note, all you have to do is click on new note here and simply start typing. You can resize those notes, name it here, and that is one of the notes. Of course, uh, when creating those notes, you can simply copy and paste the content from whatever other sites and such for the directions and things of that nature that you want to keep track of. You could share them with other individuals if necessary by just choosing share notes here and then uh, specify the email address of that individual that you want to share them with and they will be able to access them from Microsoft Outlook on their end. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to forward your email from Microsoft Exchange account to another personal email account. This is provided that your company allows you to do that. The best way to do this is by using Microsoft Outlook Web Access or the web module for uh, Microsoft Exchange. So to do that, you basically log into your Exchange mail over the web, and then you go here under the gear icon. And of course, we are using here Microsoft Exchange 2016. Then go under Options, and then go under Inbox and Sweep Rules. Here, we're going to create a new rule by clicking on this Add icon, and then we're going to say Forward Email. And then we choose one of the options, one of the conditions, Apply to all messages, and then do this, do the following action for all the messages. So we want to forward or redirect or send it. So in this case, we want to keep an uh, email in the mailbox, but then forward it to another account or another individual automatically. Here we click on uh, forward the message to. And then if it is within the organization, you can search for people over here. If it's um, outside of the organization, you can just type the, the email address uh, next to the word to. It's a little tricky there. <laughs> Uh, because you don't uh, figure out that that's where you'd be typing, but that's how it is. So you just type the email address in there, and then we press OK here. Now at this point, all the new mail messages will be forwarded. Anything from online instructor here will be forwarded to DL staff account. And also the email messages will remain in your email box. So you can use this to forward to a personal Gmail account or some other account uh, so that you have one mailbox to manage, provided your company allows this. By the way, you can do these rules for uh, specific messages, just uh, if it has a keyword in it to take a specific action and such. And um, those specific rules, you can do them from Outlook itself or through the web module 
of Microsoft Exchange. Now, if we want to deactivate this rule, we go back here under the options, the gear icon, go under options, and then under inbox and sweep rules, and then choose to deactivate the rule and then press save changes. Of course, you could um, delete it as well if you're sure you no longer need it. session I'm going to demonstrate how to work with the Outlook data. We're going to cover how to back up uh, your Outlook mailbox. So to back up your Outlook mailbox, you go here under File, and then you go under Open and Export, and then choose here Import, Export, and then choose to export to a file. So we are going to back up to create a PSD file of your Outlook data. Then we click on Next. And then we want to choose the Outlook PST. And then you choose your whole mailbox with all the messages and such, including the subfolders. Then click on Next. Choose where you want to back it up. Notice it's putting on the Documents, Outlook, and all that type of thing. Click on Finish. And then press OK. It's going to take a little time, depending on how much uh, data you have. In this case, it didn't take as much, because this is just a test account for us to do this tutorial. Now, to restore this file, you could either go here under File, and then choose Open or Export. And you could open a data file from here. So you can open that specific backup file. And now that backup file that we had from before, it has all the messages, all the stuff that we had from before in here. So that's one way to open it. The other way that you can do it is if you don't want a separate data file from here, and let's say you're setting things up from uh, scratch or the system crashed or you want to get to those old messages to import, you can go here under File and then choose Open and Export choose import export and then you can choose to import from another program or a file so we are just doing the reverse now we are importing we click on next we choose the data file pst next we find the backup where we had stored it earlier and then click on next and then it will repopulate it will recreate and add all those items to the same structure of your actual account. So I'm not going to do that in this case, because there is no need for me to do it, but it will kind of replace all the stuff here on the left with items that you had backed up from that PSD file. Now the nice thing here is also from time to time, if you have a lot of contacts, you can export those contacts only to a PST file and restore them or have them as a backup and such. So basically the idea here is we are backing up and restoring only certain parts of that Outlook account. So we click here on File and then choose Open and Export. We go under Import Export. We choose Export to a File, Next, and then we choose PST. Next, and then here go and pick the contacts that you want. So we want just the contacts module. Choose the subfolder for contacts, and then click on Next, and then you can call this just contacts. Finish. You can choose to enter a password. There's typically no need to enter a password unless you want it to be really secure. And then at some point in time, or um, to restore it, you simply go under File, Import, Export, Import from a File, PST, browse for it. So we want contacts. And then you can choose to allow duplicates or not, and then just press Next, and it'll bring in all those contacts. You can choose where to place them and what account and such, and press Finish and then the contacts will be imported. So in this case, in the second scenario, we imported only a specific item from our Outlook account. 
So this is it. Uh, thank you for watching and for making it this far in the tutorial. I hope this has been helpful for you. Subscribe to this channel first and view the other resources that are available within this YouTube channel and spread the word. That is one way that you can help with this work. My hope is that uh, people from across the world will be able to use these resources to advance in their careers, to advance in their knowledge, and even for those that are disadvantaged that they cannot afford to pay for a class online and such, that they can take advantage of these resources. Thank you.